the stream's gone live. Hopefully things are okay. It looks okay on my end. I don't know why it'd be different. Bizarre. Bizarre. Hmm. Now to wait for Twitch to catch up. Oh, no, there we are. Awesome. Right, uh, if there's anybody in the chat, could you confirm if the microphone is okay? I, c I can't fathom why it'd be weird, to be honest. I'm looking at the settings, and the settings are, are pretty fine. I hope she's using the right mic. Ray? Rake. Still sounds weird. Is it? Sounds good? Hmm. Like, it sounds weird in what way? That's the difficult part. It's like I don't know how it sounds. It seems to be okay. I can't. I can't fathom why there'd be anything different here. Um. Hmm. It's like a slight echo. Uh I don't know. Maybe. Maybe try refreshing Twitch. Um, maybe, maybe there's another browser open? I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't fathom what would cause something like that. I mean, thanks for the feedback. It does really help. Uh, let me move these over here. We'll be good to go. Let's get set up again. Hey, didn't that comment? Yeah, good to have you, my friend. Hey, didn't that arrow? Can you guys hear me? Hey, didn't they have Oaken? Hello there, Bleach. Uh, just confirm, can everybody hear me like? Okay, you can hear me. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Uh, I did nothing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Parmentia joined in and Oaken fixed it. And Bleached. And Aero. Okay, we'll get into things then. Um, okay, I'm glad that they're working out. As long as things work, that's okay. You need coffee. That sounds about right. Uh, Vigalax, will you make a tutorial about Warner Pacific? Ah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the game on at the moment. It's launching it now. Would I make a tutorial about Warner Pacific? In the future, eventually. I don't really know enough about the game per se to make like an actual full tutorial. I think it's one of those things of where you've got to really have a good, solid grasp of pretty much all aspects of the game before you can really like advise others as such. Uh, yeah, I got one of these. Um, I do like one of these. It just crashes a lot on me, and it, it just doesn't like me. That's the only issue. Uh, hey, Dylan, Alex. Good to have you, my friend. you got a really nice, cool purple color there in the chat. I like that. I do like purple. It's my favorite color. Red 5, checking in. <laughs> uh, it's funny. He is always funny. Okay. Yeah, so we did spot what looked to be very, very likely to be the American Carrier Group, which is actually really good to have there. Um, it roundabout works with what we expected. There was like a sort of uh, delay between spotting and where we expected to spot him, and that seems to be because he had been, uh, uh, well, he'd refueled at sea, which makes sense. Yeah, I get what you mean there, Bleach. I get what you mean. Ah, so we do occupy that base in the north, which is handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, anything in that uh, publisher's catalog I can get access to, if they decide to send me the bloody key, that is. Sometimes they can be kind of stingy. I'm looking forward to one of these too, whenever that comes out. I used to have a rough idea, but yeah, no longer. Okay, so we have assets moving to Rabal, which is good. We will be moving a number of naval guard units out from Nagasaki in the near future. Just getting the ships into uh, Japan. Ah. Interesting, so we see some uh, ships out in the Bay of Bengal. It's been a while since we've saw anything like that. And it's a DD then, a Stronghold. Always at the right time as I send in assets like APDs, isn't it? Well, uh, I'm going to be rather annoyed if I lose an APD. <laughs> I'm going to be rather annoyed. Okay. British ASW is really scary. But we managed to come out okay, so that's nice. So we see the light cruiser at Emerald. Okay. I'm hoping those APDs are alright. <sighs> Typical, isn't it? Typical. We'll see. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're playing Deadman. This is a Deadman one. Yes, 
Yeah, they are. Uh, I think Water Pacific would be my favourite, obviously, just because of the amount of freedom. And as uh, Alex says there, War Plant Orange is actually pretty fun. It, I just really wish it was modernised, really. If it was on the same engine as Water Pacific Council Edition, it'd be really interesting, actually. Uh, but alas, no. Hey, there, Mr. Childerberg. Good to have you, my friend. Right, so it's in the night, sorry, day phase, resuming course. Ah, fucking course. How does he know? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Well, that's an APD. God damn it. How does he effing know? I swear to God, his, his guesswork is just unbelievable. So that is the Shimakaze sank there. I can't believe it. The one turn. That's a uh, heavy cruiser. Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, of course we uh, don't explode on a heavy cruiser. Uh, his gas work is unbelievable. <laughs> I swear to God, it's just fucking unbelievable. Uh, that's annoying. That's annoying. We didn't lose both APDs, so I'll take that. It's kind of annoying, so that's the turn I was going to go for Akiab. Uh, we're playing in Japan, yes. We're playing in Japan. So we did see the heavy cruiser uh, Canberra, which is nice. So he looked like it looks as if he's actually heading towards. M no, he's mm. right. It looks like he's nearing midway there. It looked like he might have some assets going a different direction there, but sometimes it's hard to tell. Yeah, he's bloody good. He's very bloody good. I swear. It looks like that uh, Taswast is already out in that area, which is uh, something we have to take into consideration. That's annoying. It is annoying. It didn't cost us that much. The APD is a nice ship to have, though. We do have assets in the area that can actually deal with a task force like that, such as the heavy cruisers. So what we may want to potentially do is have the heavy cruisers and the DD salad out somewhat beyond Rangoon, uh, within actual um, naval search umbrella and within naval attack umbrella. We don't get very reliable results here. Oh, we are hitting the airfield, that's why. Oh, severe storms, right, that makes sense. How you doing there, Vulcan? Uh, Dadman sent in about four, well, like, a couple light cruisers and sank an APD, which is annoying. Just always guesses the right time. He's moving in from Kyanko. I didn't see that. I haven't looked at anything really quite serious. See, this is the issue. It's like I'm obviously watching chat sometimes and I miss things. Okay. So we're hitting the supply dumps. We haven't seen anything about a Catalina for a while now. Which is interesting. It does make me wonder how they actually pulled them out. It was very strange that we had about two or so days where we had reliable hits against Catalinas and now we don't see them. Uh, we never got like an indication about them, so I don't know. It's, it's an interesting one, really. Right, okay. That shouldn't be there. <laughs> that shouldn't be there. Right, if he's coming in at a thousand feet again, he's gonna be Yep, looks like he's coming in low again. I can't I can't get why he does this. He's been fortunate to not be shot down yet, but Oh there's one shot down. I don't know what he expects to do. It's just not enough. Now this is what I've been afraid of for some time, so it finally does happen. So we'll see how the Tojos do do. They do have very good pilots. Uh we'll see how they manage it. But at twelve K feet. So they do have their maximum maneuverability. Which doesn't seem to apparently matter at this moment in time. But this is where I've been afraid Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is where I've been afraid of for some time. Hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We can only lose six at most. Which is a shame, because we don't have that many of them at the moment in time. But they are doing what they were meant to do anyway. We'll see how we get on then. Yeah, it's a hard one to predict. It's very hard to predict, because so he's been sending these guys in unescorted for some time now, and now he sends them in with an escort. It's very difficult to predict in that manner. Well, we do have them drop out, so it looks like at worst we might lose um, two to three. Looks like that's at worst, which sucks, don't get me wrong. It doesn't make a great deal of dis uh, difference. Perhaps he's looking to come in to bombard, but we'll see. Yeah, the Hurricanes are something to be respected, which is kind of annoying. They have a lot of armament. I mean, we are damaging them. It's just the issue is that uh, that armor does as well, I believe. 
The issue is our armament is effective, but their armament is more effective against us because we don't have the uh, defense against it. Oh, thank you very much for that, Hasman. Much appreciate that for the subscription, man. Yeah, me too. Good to be back. I mean, I've got some Japanese work to do after this, but um, I've got some time now. I had classes earlier on today, so I've got some time. Okay, we do shoot one down. We've caused some damage to others, which is not too bad. Right, okay. Uh, I'm not familiar with the history of the Tojo itself. Perhaps it does have an armoured fuel tank, but I imagine the rest of the actual aircraft isn't particularly well armoured, and that's the issue. <laughs> but of course I do not know the history of the aircraft, so uh, I can't really speak as to that. I believe in game they have zero armour, so it doesn't uh, take into account as if they are armoured as such, while the Hurricanes are armoured, I believe. And that's another one damage there, and we do have one shot down, which sucks. Yeah, it's difficult. Difficult. We are moving AA out to Magway, but there's not too much we can do against such numbers. But, could have been worse. Uh, could have been worse. It's annoying, though. It is annoying. It seems to be quite annoying in uh, Burma now. Ah, oh, well. The APD is kind of annoying. I suppose it can happen that we didn't have the uh, naval search adequate to spot the enemy. Well, damaged by flax, interesting. Uh, we do have a bunch of DDs that are being converted to APDs. It's not the end of the world. It just means there'll be a slight uh, delay. Oh, so he's actually moving his assets out there from Sorabaya. We do have a heavy cruiser that cope and DD, so we can actually go out and uh, intercept those. And uh, naval attack, actually, at uh, Copang. So I wonder if they pick up on them with the naval attack. Unescorted K-8. Uh, K Sorry, K-48 is good in there. That was fun. That was fun. Hits on the port. Nice. Right. So, relatively quiet. I still would have preferred to put a torpedo into the uh, Canberra. So we do have the other APD unload there. At least she can get the hell out of Dodge. Ah, uh, there we go. The one turn, I'm like, all right, fine, I'll go for Akiab. <laughs> and it kicks me in the backside. Oh, dear. Right, so I am conducting a shock attack against these units here. So it's only the 9th separate brigade, but they're going to be overwhelmed and destroyed, which they are. I'd imagine the base force will... Is it going to... Re oh, it surrenders. There we go. I was going to say, if it's going to retreat, that'd be a pain in the ass. So, yep, they're low on supply. So we now begin to move towards the Rumchi. So 2,288 casualties there. Uh, we have a deliberate attack over here with the 6th Division against the 26th Chinese Corps. It looks like they're finally done for. I, Right, they do finally retreat. I was kind of hoping they'd actually remain in position because we could have actually shocked to attack them. And, uh, 37 casualties there. Oh, that's... Wow, okay. Uh, 3,270. That would have been a nice one for a shock attack. That's actually a really... What roll did we get there? 398. Um, which is not... Yeah, that's good roll, to be fair. But we have 384... AV base, but that's still good enough. It does the job, doesn't it? I mean, they've got low AV there. Cool. Very nice. So we have 3,270 there, 156 destroyed, 50 destroyed. That core has suffered some pretty nasty losses there, which means the 26 Chinese core is not going to be particularly threatening. Um, oh, wow, well, I didn't realise it was as weak. Otherwise, I would have gone for a shock attack. Was that destroyed, or I think that might have been destroyed there. Would have been nice had they retreated, but they retreat towards. Sorry, had they been destroyed as well. That's one unit destroyed there. That's good. Uh, deliberate attack over here then with the armored units. Yeah, that's essentially destroyed there. They surrender outright, which is good news. Okay, only one more base there on the tip of Java here. Yeah, 119 men. Feel bad for those guys. We do have another bombardment now at Surabaya. More men are on their way now to Surabaya as well, not too far out. Looks like we do have the infantry unloaded over here as well. So they're not going to be too long from joining us at Surabaya. Well, we'll actually go ahead and uh, conduct an attack there at Surabaya. I'd like to try and get as much AV as I can to try and take Surabaya as intact as I can. Though. I don't think there's an issue about whether we can take it or not. It's just how intact can we take it. It'd be nice if we could do it fairly intact. 
Okay, I speed that up there. So we destroy another small unit vent. So these are the base forces he's pulling out from here. Which is good to destroy them. Okay, so there we are. So a relatively quiet turn. Relatively. It would have been a fine turn had we not had that debacle in Burma. Uh, the Taojo's is a shame. We'll have to see what happens with his Hurricanes. It depends on the range in which they're moving out at, well, flying out from. He might have some Ops losses. I know we did cause some damage, but hopefully that damage can be translated into losses on his end as well. Okay. Would have been nice to put a bloody torpedo into the camp, though. I swear, our luck is just unbelievable sometimes. <laughs> it's just unbelievable sometimes. I've transferred uh, additional Sallies over to Hankow. It's going to save it here, actually. Yeah, transferred additional Sallies to Hankow. We should have some more to transfer shortly enough as well. What I wanted to do is really try to uh, increase the amount of bomber capability we have in China. I do need an airfield. We could bomb from Hankow, but we'd be bombing at extended range. We can do that, but it's not really quite worthwhile. It's just better to actually have the range to use a full payload and not suffer from undue operational losses caused by uh, extended rangers. We're only one hex away from that, which is kind of annoying. So we need an airfield closer or to build up airfields uh, a little bit more than within range already. So like such as Xi'an needs to be built up. Uh, Ichang would be nice to build up because I could actually use that as well within range. It's close to Hankow as well. It's on a major road, which is quite nice. It actually make that base worth a damn. Uh, so I'll take a look first and foremost on the losses here today. Um, okay, well, apparently two in air to wear and two to ops losses, which is not too bad. We had three Tojos. Which, if that's true, then okay, at least it's not that bad. It's not great, but it's not that bad if that's true. Topses go down, which is a shame about Opses. Uh, Ops losses. L3Y2 Tina. Uh, E13 Jake there. He has an SB2U3 Vindicator loss there to operations. A PBY5 Catalina loss. SB3 there. Obviously, shot down with flag. So, 7-7 seven, seven today. And then if we take a look at ships sunk today. Yeah, Shimakaze. <sighs> I mean, she was a fast one as well. That's what annoys me. The Minikazes are actually pretty good for APDs. Kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. What's a little bit worrying is the fact that we don't actually see anything in this area here right now. So that's a little bit concerning. So they're going to have to get the hell out of Dodge. They're not the quickest unit in the world either, which is not exactly spectacular right now. But they may have a chance to escape. I don't imagine he's going to be coming much closer. But I'll put them on full speed to make sure they do escape. Well, at least try to ensure they do escape. Um, I mean, in fairness, he has 43 fighters over here. We know he has some bombers, and I've got to imagine these bombs are coming from potential like Calcutta or from another base in this area at this moment in time. We do have the heavy cruisers over here. With a good deal of actual DD support. Also have a heavy cruiser over there. I'm surprised we're not seeing anything here, really. But then again, we aren't running naval search as we once did. We could do no. Uh, we can have naval search run, and it seems that's what we need to have. It's not insignificant from out here, though. That's running on twelve. Right, which is about there then. So I think what we'll do then is actually extend. I'll probably put one of the squadrons onto naval search and extend that range again. Uh, I could do with some search in this area here, but that's good to know. Then hey, didn't they just? Okay. But we have that then. Ah, so it looks like the enemy tanks have moved on into this position here then. Okie dokie. Now. With enemy units on the coast, it's a little bit concerning about bombardment. So I'm going to have them move in combat mode at least until we can... I don't know, maybe... But move in combat mode, it reduces losses that could come about through bombardment. I'll move in combat mode for now. Have them move separately. We do have a six tank regiment that can move up here. Yeah, I know, just, but this is the thing. Um, it, this is like more of a hobby than anything else. Uh, it doesn't really pay enough to make it worth, uh, well, not so much worth, but to make it like a regular thing as such. Then I do have 
stupendous amounts of uni work. <laughs> Absolutely fucking stupendous. Never ending. I do have a tank, so. I'm gonna place them into combat mode there. Okay, I can continue movement. Well, the good news is we did manage to get these men ashore here as well. He does have to attack these units in uh, time street terrain. He does have low supply. He does have tanks, so he could probably kick them out. But that means he still has to fight through this hex here as well, which is good. We do have his tire unit, which is moving as well to block. I did that can get into position to block. But we'll see. Okay, we do have more aviation support over here now. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. And I think we can get to it. I think we can get to it. Um, it's probably just easier to rewatch the replay there, just. Uh, there was a little bit of a debacle over here. Uh, they're using Stuart light tanks, which are actually pretty damn good, to be fair. They might not be very good in the European theatre as such at this moment in time. But even now, even then, they're actually not bad. But sure, it's not a bad tank, really. It's just the opponents that it went up against just became increasingly uh, more effective. I didn't realise there was a trail there. I was wondering why it's taken so long. Unless it makes more sense just to go north and then go like that. So I think they only move about, uh, was it five miles down a trail, or is it even less than that? Oh, I love how that looks. Tanks on trails. Does it not give me the trail? No, I don't think it gives me the trail on here. Okay. Right, so we do have eyes on him now, which is good. I mean, this is it. We do have a lot of subs in this area, so he's going to have to uh, he's going to have to deal with that. I mean, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen 18 subs, and 19 over there. There are additional subs coming out from this area as well. We do have another one here, and there's another one over here as well, unless I count that one. So, what we're going to essentially do is do <laughs> what he has done to us, to him. And that's essentially hounded with uh, submarines in the area. And this is the thing, he has assets in there. I mean, this is it. We we got a pass at the Canberra. That could have been a uh, carry, and he's going to have to bear that in mind. It's interesting as well, because he has a tendency to avoid moving at full speed, which is actually pretty good. That works out well for us, because if he carries on moving at a uh, normal cruise speed, that allows us to actually get assets in his way there. His other alternative is maybe he heads towards Midway to make port, but if he makes port at Midway and we can actually see that, then at least we actually keep an eye on him. Yeah, Midway has an airbase, uh, but it doesn't make that much of a difference as such. He can run naval search out from there. The difference here is he doesn't have the same anti-submarine warfare capabilities that we do. Like, for example, we can, like, imagine, well, you remember when we had the actual uh, assets out this way, we could see all the submarines in the area. We did occasionally attack. We didn't attack terribly much, because it seems to be an experience issue at this moment in time, but we were aware of the submarines in the area. He is aware of some submarines in the area, but not all of them. Like you can see, he's got no detection on this submarine. He has 10 out of 10 on this one because it attacked, but then he has 8 out of 8 here, none on that one, none on that one. He doesn't see anything around this area. So that's going to make it more worrisome for him, though. Okay, so we do have our APDs over here. They're moving in there so they can get the rest of the troops loaded up. Okay. Um. I mean, yes. <laughs> I, I guess you can call Wake Island a hole in our defences. I mean, sure. There's not much I can do about that other than to take it, which is the plan. Uh, is it a hole in defences? Not really, because that kind of kind of implies that they were our defences to begin with. I think. A vulnerability, perhaps. I have to give it a much better for the follow there, Comcon. Concon. There we go. Much appreciated. Yeah, we've been trying to take Wake. It's just a pain in the ass because he. He likes to have his carriers hang around here. And in future games, obviously, what I would do is have something positioned at Tongi because that is a great position to run H6K4s from. But this is it. But yeah, we'll be after it. What we've come down here to do is actually have the uh, vulnerable assets moved away. So obviously like the fuel and etc we don't need to have here. So we've had it moved out to a position where it is protected. 
Uh, we are increasing our ability to strike out as well. So we do have uh, three squadrons of zeros over here. Obviously, the numbers are increasing as well. So that is a good number of zeros. We do have G3s over here as well. So that's good. So we do have a good ground-based complement that will continue to increase in the time to come as well. Uh, which is great. We also do have the Betis out here too. So we do have our flanks somewhat covered, which is nice. Uh, truck has been more or less evacuated as well. It's not going to be anything like it used to be, really. I'm going to get more supply moving out to Marshall Islands as well, so we do have a lot of overstack. Yeah, truck uh, used to be the center of the logistics in this area. It is no longer. Um, unfortunately, not on Tongi because there's no airfield. And we could, I mean, we can reach Wake from Inuatok. It could be reached. Um, we do have zeros of the board with carriers, which would be better for that sort of task. What we're going to want to do is obviously get in here to bombard. The good news is we do have regular detection on Wake Island, which is quite useful. So we're going to be looking towards another bombardment shortly. We wanted to make sure these assets got over here safely, which is good. It means we can actually have things sorted out and we'll have the Kinnipatai and the bombardment assets go back north and shortly. But yes, um, assets such as this, like these AOs, are not required. It does actually allow us to free up the DMSs and etc. I think what we'll probably want to do perhaps then is... Um, it's going to be an interesting one because we know that Wake Island is mined. So we'll have to try and demine it, which is going to be easier said than done. Especially since the AM AMCs were sunk, which kind of sucks. But yeah, we'll get a bombardment in there. Get some Roman bombardments going shortly enough. Any time to take Wake. Don't worry about Wake, just. I mean, in fairness, we are literally trying to take at the moment in time so it's not as if it's like a hole in the defenses it's like a, it's an active operation right now so we'll get there we do have some days left i do want to land soon very soon i'd like to land in the next few days but we still have enough time to get some bombardments in there really which is something i'd like to do right cl's over there looks like it's gonna be coming in for another bombardment in the near future now, we do have the Shortlands over here. That is actually now a size 2 airfield, which is good. We also do have the 4th Naval Fleet Headquarters, sorry, the 4th Fleet Headquarters over here, which is a command HQ. So I think what we might want to do then is actually go ahead and base some naval strike capability out here at Shortlands and try to whack him if we could. Oh. Yeah, normally, normally you should be able to take uh, Wake. The reason why we didn't get Wake this time around is because he had the carriers around there. But obviously, uh, normally, uh, things would have been different. Normally, there would have been a strike against uh, Pearl Harbor, so the Kinnipatai would have been out in that area. It's a shame, really. Um, he seems to have done something like that before, and he seems to be fairly familiar with the actual concept of what he was doing there. All right, let's get this supply in here. I need to get that in there. But yeah, we'll look at actually set up a naval strike out from Shortlands if we can. Which we can. Uh, it's just increasing numbers over here. I'd like to go ahead and bombard Khans at some point soon. Okay. I'd love to know what the supply situation is like. How long until this additional unit arrives? Has it arrived? Or did I send it to someone else? Huh. Odd. It might have been flown out. <laughs> Might be flying, so I forgot about that. Perhaps. Okay. Yeah, there we are. See, this is the thing because I do have Infinite Monkey to help me out with the naval, uh, well, with pilots and air power, etc. So sometimes there are things where we don't communicate. Like I didn't realize there's B5 and twos, sorry, B5 and twos over here, which is nice. That gives us something to work with. Obviously, longer range would be good. But we can talk about that one and get something sorted out. Okay. 
We do have some supply in here at the Carter Bay, which is good. I do need to obviously get more supply in here, which is on its way, but we do need to get that built up soon. The Carter Bay is going to be very useful. It's a shame that we had assets lost, but once that's up to size 2 airfield, that's going to be great. It's going to be the center of this area here. He likes to make it difficult for us, but that is uh, totally within his power to do that. AMCs. Find that hard to believe that, really. No, Josh, you got to think, like, we didn't know what was coming there in Japan. Like, this is it. Would have anybody have predicted an attack against Japan? No. We did have naval search. It just, he threaded the needle. He found where the naval search didn't cover. And he got through there. He's a very good player, and I think people really do have to bear in mind that he is significantly better. It's very much a one-sided match in terms of experience. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's, let's try to avoid stuff like that. Let's see, man. Okay. So if I'm going to take his current position there. I imagine he's fueled up. I can't imagine him not being fueled. Oh, I know. It sucked, didn't it? Right. Ah, they're a naval search right home. I could change that. Uh, bombs would be quite good. Okay. Oh, they sure do like to take their time, don't they? They sure do like to take their time. So I do have these destroyers over here. What I'm going to be doing is, as soon as we take this, but I'm going to be using them for the time being, just make sure we wrap up things in this area. Uh, the intention of these DDs was to make sure things like this don't escape, so we'll have to make sure that's gone. But then afterwards, I'm going to have them loaded up as fast transports and take the rest of these bases in this area, so... I just obviously load men aboard, aboard each DD, get moving out very quickly, take as many bases as quickly as we can, while we still can. Right, not far away. Right, so it's just the infantry regiments over here, then. Okay. What I'll do then is I'll send the reconnaissance regiment here. I'll have the 8th tank regiment head back to Surabaya. Though, I think what I'll do is I'll have it continue on. I'd rather make sure I take this base. It'd be great to have them at Surabaya, but we still have some time to get them back to Surabaya anyway. These guys are going to have to march up over here. So it's uh, some time yet anyway. So we do have the aviation squad which has arrived in here. Obviously that's going to be afterwards. Uh, we do have a mountain gun regiment, so we do actually have additional guns now to bombard with, which is nice. Very helpful. So those are the 15s. Uh, they do have some 100s in there. And the 75s. Right, there we go. Yeah, we do have the two engineer regiments, which are full strength, which are going to be very, very useful for us. I'll take some AV to take it. I imagine he's going to have fortifications, but I imagine his men will not last long. Okay. I'd like to get a unit into Marie to act as a garrison, actually. It does worry me with assets like this. It hasn't blocked. It hasn't blocked at all. That That's the thing there, Josh. You've got to really look at this. It's like, he hasn't. <laughs> he just hasn't. He's made it difficult, but this is going to be a situation that is resolved. We're moving our way down here. We're doing it in a different way. He's made it difficult, but this is it. Look at Rabal. He doesn't come to attack Rabal anymore because he knows that he would lose. It, well, this is it. He's got to send a carrier asset. Well, he's got to send a carrier task force to actually be able to go into that area and have at least some chance. 
He's a good player and he's been very lucky as well. He should have been punished more. He should have been punished at Rabar with the mines. I mean, look at when we bombarded Wake. We got hit by a few mines. He didn't get hit by any mines. He's gone through minefields over here. He's gone through many submarines over here and he hasn't been punished. It's kind of annoying how lucky he is sometimes, really. His bombardment was ridiculously effective as well. Which is kind of annoying. <laughs> Lots of little things like that, I don't know. Oh, well. Right, so we do have a north and, well, this uh, side of uh, Mindanao, which is quite useful. At least that's secured. I have transferred bombers over here. I'm going to have them transferred uh, down to Jolo, I reckon, perhaps. What's their range? Uh, not these guys, sorry. Four and five. Yeah, so too far. I wonder if I can get them transferred to Jolo. Yes, there we go. Okay. So that's six, which is still outside range. But what I'd like to do is get an aviation unit set up over here at uh, Cotabato. If I can actually have them start to bomb him properly now. <laughs> no, there's, there's luck. There's also luck. Now, so when it comes to mines, it's a numbers game. Well, I mean, obviously, everything's a number in this game. Obviously, everything's like a roll, essentially. It's just bloody lucky when it comes to them. Which is kind of annoying. But, I mean, we've had luck as well at points. Right, we do have our sellers over here. This one will be active shortly. I do um, wonder about that one. I think, is it worthwhile to have 12 of them hit Gagayan? Or is it better just to have them sent it to China? I think I'll have them sent it to China, really. Kagayan's not a priority. Obviously, when we do have forces available from Sorabaya, we can actually have them sent out to jo uh, to Mindanao. Possibly. I mean, it was very funny what we saw along here on the coast. He definitely knew something that we didn't over here at Rumbury Island, and he did exploit that against us. I'd love to know what it was, but it was damn well effective. Maybe worthwhile to put our cruisers out here. I don't think there's a huge amount it can do, but it does worry me not knowing what is in this area right now. But then again, this is the issue, isn't it? If we do actually strike in there, he does have fighters, which makes it hard. It can bombard, but it's not going to be the end of the world if it does bombard. Especially if we move in combat mode, it's not going to be the end of the world. Right, so we do finally have this road open now, which is excellent. I'm going to have this infantry squad move, well, this infantry unit move over here then to uh, hold on to that. There isn't a road. There, well, there's a road halfway, which is good. Okay. So what I'm going to do here then, let's see. Split that unit. One unit can head that way. Four. Hmm. Hmm. All I need to do is open up that hex side. I think if I was to move into this area, but then again, what I could do is actually have that unit head over here to take the hex side and have this unit uh, division head in that way, which I think I will do. Yeah, we'll have them follow up. Okay. Of course, there's no road this way. And the terrain's jungle, sort of wooded, so it'll take a little while. But once I get into that hex there, it's worthwhile doing. I want to lock that down. Ah, thanks for voting, man. That's appreciated. Uh... Well, the thing is, Japan eventually loses. We're eventually going to lose. But I mean, players have lost the entirety of Kitabatai on like day two. Well, day one, day two, so. We've had things go wrong in this game. Well, we've had things go badly in this game, but people have had <laughs> things go far, far worse. We have a lot of things that have gone right. As far as it goes, on land, we've really been doing very well. He's given us a lot of easy victories that he shouldn't really have given us, but he has, and let's just say we're not going to say no to them. 
Like, for example, I've been able to destroy a British division in Burma, essentially route in Burma. If we can get these tanks sorted, then that's going to be excellent as well. There's a lot of things going well for us. I mean, it looks like China. I mean, China as well is not far from Fallen. It really isn't that far from Fallen. So we've had some uh, upsets at sea, which is a pain in the backside. We've not had many upsets in the air as such. We've had one or two, but not many. It's only really been at sea where he's been given us a hard, hard time. Yeah, that's it, really. I do think it's easier to play as the Allies aggressively because, well, this is the thing. Japan, well, Japan has to go and take the base as well as the Allies they just simply have to hold. But you have to go get them and you can't lose the base unless somebody comes and takes it, really. So I do think it's far easier for the Allies to go out there and essentially act as marauders, which is really how it should be for Japan, but it doesn't quite work out that way. And especially in a game where there's no rules, it doesn't quite work out like that. Hey, Denarbad, good to have you, my friend. The situation's not... It's not that bad, honestly. It's not that bad. I think if you think it's bad now, just, just wait until we're a few years in. That's when things start to get bad. We've had defeats at sea, but Japan had defeats at sea. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it depends on the timing of it. But it's not the end of the world, my dude. Have faith. I still can't fathom why he's moving down this way. You have sinned. You have sinned. You must donate to my OnlyFans. <laughs> it is the only way. That's kind of bad at sea, but it's a good player. But it's not that bad. <laughs> I do think people uh, over overemphasize carriers. That's my personal opinion. I kind of think that uh, land-based air power matters more. But then it's one of these things you've got to get to the point where you can actually have that land-based air power. But then again, we are playing a game where there are very little rules. So the things that we can do in this game, you wouldn't be able to do in a normal game. So it's, uh, what is it? Come say, come say, come say, come say. I can't remember how you pronounce it, but it's around about that. Anyway, we're getting stuck on this. I haven't got the time. I've got some work to do after this. I've got to be on, I've got to be a good boy. But I do, I do appreciate a good debate. That's the thing, I do like a good debate. To a degree, yes. Ah, so he's leaving at Kyanko. That's interesting. Hmm. So that's what you were talking about there, isn't it, Ben Doom? Yeah, I've only just noticed that. That's very interesting. And uh, he's going in all directions, apparently. I don't know why he's leaving at Kyanko. I don't know why. I mean, why would you do something like that? I mean, this is it. He's he's doing that very deliberately, sending units in all these different directions. But is he actually leaving Kyanko? Why would he leave Kyanko? Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I need your I need your only pants. <laughs> Panzer Corps Two is fun. I just think some of the missions go on far too long. It's like they should end when you actually complete the mission objectives. That'd be nice. Yeah, but it's going to have a carrier superiority anyway, Evoken. Well, I don't know. I don't think he's leaving Kyanko. If he's leaving Kyanko, then he can leave Kyanko, in my opinion. If he wants to head towards Chengdu, that's going to make it harder. I mean, this is like times three, but the fact is we could move around that. I don't need to own this hex. I can move around him. I mean, that's still only times two. This is still times two. If he wants to sit in this hex, he can do so. I'll leave a strong enough force to hold Kyanko, and then... Okay. Interesting. Yeah, we're going to have it before 43. We should have at the end of 42, around that sort of time there, really. Yeah. But does it really make that much of a difference? I'd love you, Evoker, but I think sometimes you're a bit too pessimistic. So it's one thing of, yes, he has, he can have that carrier superiority, but then the thing is, well, what's he going to do with that carrier superiority? There's a lot more nuance to the argument than just having raw numbers, in my opinion. But anyway, we're going to get stuck on debates here. I'd love to, be, uh, to debate, to debate, but I don't have the time, unfortunately. Uh, I am playing as the Japanese Empire. 
Right, C. Let's see. What AV do we have here? 144. Hey, did that obey Kate Bosch? Oh, that was a while ago. That was a while ago. Oh, I'm playing against Admiral Dadman. Uh, he is on the forum. He's a moderator. He's a great guy. Very good guy. Very, very experienced. Yeah, see, that's the thing of Oaken, isn't it? It's like he's very aggressive, and I think that is awesome. Honestly, it's the most exciting thing about him, really, is that he is so aggressive. It's so incredible uh, incredible to actually play against somebody who's so aggressive. But, I mean, that will come with risk, and the thing is, he could stand back and he could allow his superiority to increase and increase and increase until it becomes a point where there's, it's very difficult to do something. But if he's going to be aggressive, it does actually allow us to do something in these earlier years where we do have a greater ability to do so, especially in this game. So it's one of those where it's a double-edged sword there. I think what I'm going to do is have this division move back across the river here. Uh, the reason being, it does need to recover so I can actually have it placed into rest mode, which doesn't make a tremendous difference, but it does help. But I also do want to secure my... Uh... Do I do that? Do I do that? No, I don't think I need to do that, do I? No, I don't need to do that. I don't think he's leaving Kyanko. I don't know, I just, I just don't... I don't see why he would leave Kyanko. Like, what do you guys feel about this? Because I don't feel like leaving Kyanko is a good idea for him. He might send units one way, he might send units that way, but I just don't see how that works out well. Because then we can destroy him. I don't know. It's strange. I, d I don't feel like he's moving out of Kyanko. It just seems too silly to me. And if he moves to the Tyus 3 Hex, sure, but then this road's open. So maybe he moves men here, but he could move like a small block in force there. But what does that small block in force matter when I can just go down this road anyway? And would seek to go down this road because it's clear terrain anyway. I don't know. It's bizarre. I, I just, I don't know. Yeah, as you say that, Evoke, and that's what I think it is. I think it, I think it must be some sort of bait to attack. Because I can't see why he would pull out. And especially in such a move like this. He could move men across the river over here. Sure, he could do that. But then this is like terrain with no roads. It's rough terrain. And in rough terrain, units march only uh, five miles a day. And we have a secondary road here. It's not great, but it's still a secondary road. So by the time he'd actually be here, we'd be able to just wait for him. Possibly. But then, yeah, the different directions is very interesting. Hmm. Odd. Very odd. I don't think it really much matters, to be fair. I didn't bombard this turn because I wanted supply to recover. Severe storms overhead um, lessen the impact of bombing the airfield, though. But, yep, we'll bombard. Possibly. The unit's recovering well enough. I mean, we're at 21, 28 AV here at the moment. Uh... It's only a 36 division here where it lost most of its troops to being disabled. It still has most of them, but they're disabled. We have 95, 90, 92, 94, obviously 966 and 84. So the divisions are actually in fairly good shape. Yeah, exactly. As Vulcan says there, like two divisions would hold against something like that. So I mean, this is where it becomes quite the difficulty for him because he's then attacking into times two terrain himself there. I don't know. It's an interesting one. We do have an... Increase of artillery and of armor on the way as well, so looking forward to that. Armored cars over there. Which aren't spectacular, but we do have additional troops too. Um, see, with that one... I'd like to launch a deliberate, but I don't think the odds are really worthwhile at the moment of time. I'd like to increase the amount of men that we do have. And we are in a position where we can keep bombarding him and also bomb him from the air as well. And it doesn't look greatly effective right now because we don't quite have airfields close enough or quite enough aviation support or enough fighters to cover it comfortably. But we will shortly enough. Yeah, as Vulcan says there, uh, the um, Japanese squad versus Chinese squad, there is a big difference between them. And obviously, yes, defense is fantastic. 
Yeah, they do hurt. They do hurt. They do, they're not causing huge amounts of damage, but they are causing damage, which is damage that he's taken that he isn't dishing back out. He also doesn't have a huge amount of supply as well, which works against him. We'll see. Right, so Imperial Guard Division has arrived. I thought they were already moving, actually. Ah, they're moving. I must have confused them there. Yeah. And especially if we fortify then Kyanko. That'd be great. Artillery there. 30 miles. Oh, I see. Right, okay. Right, so we're going to have Imperial Guard Division hold up here until 5th Division arrives. The reason being, obviously, there's a river crossing. They could probably handle that, but I'd rather have them go across at the same time than uh, piecemeal. Okay, so we do have our units over here, which is good news now. They're not too far behind, so what I'll do... Well, then again, he's not moving right now. So I don't think I need rush. When that unit arrives, I can go ahead and shock attack him then. Right, they'll be across that river next turn. They're not too far away. Yeah. No, I don't I don't think he's leaving Kyanko. It just it just seems really daft. I just don't know why he would leave Kyanko. When Cal, yes, actually to a degree. We do actually have increasing forces moving to this area now. There is a important unit, which is the 27th Division, which is unloaded at this moment in time. There are a couple of brigades, and uh, we do have this division over here. There are a couple of units being moved out this way. What I wanted to do is actually move units into such a way as we create essentially a red wall here. Uh, so he can't have units retreat towards this direction or towards the north, which I don't think they would, but just don't want it to happen anyway. But what I want to do is essentially trap him in uh, location. So over here, I'm going to have a unit move and uh, block that road. I'd like to have a unit move and block that road. Essentially, I want to block him in as much as I can. But yeah. Yeah, taking this would be nice. I do have... Ah, there we are. So the... Yep, yeah, okay. So the bombardment of one car will begin tomorrow then. So I have them retirement allowed so they can bombard and get out then. That's good news then. Yeah, so I'm going to bombard one cow, reduce his uh, power there. Okay. Yeah, the south isn't too bad, really. It can be, but he kind of spent his... Uh, his <laughs> I was going to say something there, but it's not exactly nice, is it? He kind of spent his uh, power in this area to the south earlier on, really. We managed to block that, which is quite good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is it. In your opinion, Vulcan, would you retreat to Kyanko in his uh, position? Because I wouldn't. If I had the fortifications of Times 2 terrain, I wouldn't leave that position, because then you just lose the ability to control the Japanese advance there. Oh, for 300 AV. One. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Kind of jealous. <laughs> kind of jealous. Oh, dear. Okay, they can hold that position there. Yeah, exactly. Kyanko is the last time before Chungking. So that's it. You are then in the clear terrain, and bombers will rip him a new asshole in this uh, clear terrain here, which is nice. So let's see then. Uh, the march towards Luchao is underway. So we're going to be two days now in combat mode. I've started marching these men as well, because they can then act as a garrison. So they're moving there. They're not too far away now. Should possibly arrive next turn. Which would be nice. Yeah, that's quite nice. We do have increasing amounts of them, which is good. Oh, this is a few more that can be transferred over there as well. They'll be ready tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, it looks like... Oh. Then three days for the rest of them. Two days and then one. Okay. I'll transfer them over into China then. Yeah, if only Han Kao was within 10 hexes of Kyanko rather than the 11. I may actually go ahead and bomb, bomb him anyway, but it'd be nice to be able to actually use a full payload. 
Or does it not? Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I sent them to bomb the airfield today. But it looks like the severe weather interrupted that. That's fine. I mean, maybe we do go ahead and start bombing from Hankow, perhaps. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, see, that's the difficulty, because he actually does have some AA there at Kyanko. It does make it harder. I don't want to lose too many bombers, really. Well, it depends. I mean, this is it. If you have ample amounts of bombers, you can afford a few losses. Yeah, 10k, 11k. We tried 11k last time. We had some flak damage, but no flak losses. So about 10, 11k is about, about right there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, once we're in a better position in terms of aviation support, then I'll feel more comfortable doing that. Which we're not too far away from now. And we do have some additional aviation support moving north, but it's going to be more shortly. Base force there. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, that's why we did um, 11. 11, 10. That's definitely viable. Okay. Right, it's not long now before that's going to be dealt with. 39 now. Yeah, 29 miles, it's like 46. We have the actual units moving down here as well. It's taking some time apparently, but our well will get moving. They shouldn't be taking that long there. I wonder if they're marching direct. Whoops. Oh, thank God it kept that progress, and I was going to be so annoyed. I'm going to make sure they use the major road there. Stations so have made only 18 miles. Especially being in movement mode and on major road, they shouldn't have only travelled that distance. Okay. What's the distance from Xinyang? 11. God damn it. I could build up Nanyang. Issue is it's just going to take a few days to do that. I mean, Xi'an has been worked on. It's just obviously having the engineers to do that. Lang Chao has been worked on. Been expanded. That one I'm moving the actual aviation support down to Xi'an actually. So it'll not take too long to get down that way. I might as well build up one base and build up two bases, really. Oh, yeah, another tank regiment there. Okay. Now we move on to a rumpji. I mean, this over here in the north is quite nice, because that does free up essentially two brigades.
Ah, uh, here we are. So it's going to take them three days to unpack, but then I'll be able to reform the 59th Division. Could actually transfer them elsewhere, to be honest. I'll have them hold up there for time being so I can see where they'd be better off moved to. Now, I do have additional forces. I mean, these independent mixed brigades are actually quite nice. They're not a huge amount of power, but they're enough to act in this area fairly well. Or as if you're not using them aggressively, that is. Now, that unit should have been bombed over here, actually. Yeah, they should have hit them. And the good news is when we do actually have Ai Chang in our hands, uh, or another airfield comparably close, then we can actually make use of all the bombers as well, even light bombers and etc. like that can actually add their impact. But I'll take time. I'm moving aviation support from the south of Korea over here as well into China proper to a number of different bases as well. Yeah, bombarding over here on the coast would be quite useful. So we have our 95, uh, 95k fuel there. Quite happy I actually managed to make it out in the end there. It looks a bit touch and go here and there, but it's actually making it. We do have... Unless it's been unloaded. We do have those minesweeping forces. Okay. Ah. So we do have some supply over here. Which is unloading. This is 160k that will unload there. Excellent. I do actually have two... Sorry, three I think there are. Yes. Oh, is it four? I do have four of these AMCs which are heading towards the Bardwell. But I'm going to have them moved out towards the Marsh Islands ultimately. I'd like to have them made potentially available for Wake Island. I can't imagine that's going to last long enough, but I'd like to replace the ones in this area as well. But if this carries on into that sort of time frame, then we can actually make use of them. I don't think it will, but they will still be useful out of that way. They won't do as much good at Manila. It's a small isolated guys in northwestern New Caledonia still alive. Yeah, they're still alive. They've learned to live a very simple life, a very uh, peaceful life. Yeah, we'll eventually get them. <laughs> Some company. <laughs> I can imagine the crabs are starting to look attractive at this point in time. Oh dear. Right, we are moving the ARD south as well. I'm sure I saw something else in this area here. But it must have been over here. Right. Yeah, that's true. We could do that. Right, we're moving these AKs and etc. back to Manila. Uh, there's an 18 knotter over here which I'd rather have sent elsewhere, really. But uh, it gives us some additional sea lift capability in this area, which I'd like. I'd like to get some assets moved down this way. It is risky, but we're going to have it sent to Rabal. As far as it goes, there's not a huge risk in this area because we are likely to see him coming, considering we do have actual capabilities to see him in this area. It could be hit by a torpedo. But, I mean, this is it. Is it any good at truck? It's okay at truck, but I'd rather have it at Rabal. At least at Rabal, it can actually do a lot more good. We're taking a risk, but if we lose it, we lose it. Kind of sucks, but I'd rather have the risk of getting it to Rabal where we can make much greater use of it there, really. How much force does he have at Port Moresby? Uh, Paratrooper said they could not accomplish that task because there's still some men over here. But as far as it goes for AV, I'm not too sure. It's good at Rabal too. <laughs> it's good at Rabal. Well, this is it. We're going to build up the uh, port over here Rabal as well to much larger too. Don't get me wrong, it's good at truck, but I'd rather have a Rabal. 
It's a bit of a risk, but I think it's one worthwhile taking. Plus, I can actually protect it to a much better degree over here as well. Yeah, but this is why we have airfields and why we have uh, fighters. I mean, if we care so much about an ARD, I think we've got... <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a good thing to have, but it's not the biggest thing in the world. It's not the most important thing in the world. Yeah, but that's why we've got to protect our assets there, Evoken. It's like anything, really, isn't it? It's not a huge deal to talk about at the moment in time, really, actually. Things are just moving on. Not too far now from the Final Four Sumatra. Yeah, it's, it's good, don't get me wrong, like, but it's not the most important thing in the world. It's useful to have, but it's not that amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know, but when is he going to have these massed 400 bombers? And what are we also going to have at that point in time? And is he really going to be that hell-bent on getting an ARD? I mean, they're good, but they're not that good. I don't know, though. Can I think you're placing a bit too much emphasis on it there. It's good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think we need to worry about it that much. And eventually it'd be under threat anyway. I'd rather have it made use of in Rabal, where it can actually do more good. At least in my opinion. But I'm not here to argue about the merits of that. It's simply going to be. Now we're looking alright. Uh, not tremendous amounts to do. So we're going to finish off with the R and D. But this is it. Health for debate is always good. So it's good to talk about these things. And to recognise the possibilities. And the merits of course of both. So three and four days. Not far now until we can actually get that. Looks like Gary converted another one over here, so that one's going to be eight days, which is quite useful. Right, okay. Did you see an enemy unit south of Marie? Yeah, there's like a unit in the jungles where I can't imagine it's one that's tremendously <laughs> healthy. Uh, but I'd like to get some sort of um, unit with AB sent out to Marie, just to give some additional uh, defense, really. Now, I've seen more freeze now, which is good. I was hoping we actually had an 8 there in the key 83. I would have been quite happy. Would have been rather mesmerized because we didn't have anything like a 7 before, but hey. Oh well, making progress. Alright, getting there. We're not too far away now from being able to make increased progress on the A6M8, I believe. Ah, there we are, yes. We have 500 in the pool now, which is good. Uh, so that will accelerate R&D. Obviously, what we'll do is keep above that 500. And we can accelerate that R&D, which is good. That would be very useful there. Okay. Now, I'm fairly confident we'll have the A6M8 by the end of the year. Which will be quite nice to have. Armaments is down to 5944. I still have some time here in Armaments. How are we doing in Tokyo? Because that supply, so resource situation in Tokyo has been quite annoying as of late. Hmm. Yeah, they're complaining about lack of uh, resources here at the moment. Okay. There'll be resources in Japan shortly. So there's another 46 odd thousand there. I do have that fuel heading this way too. Drawn that from Port Arthur. I 
So 66,000 tons of air, and of 160,000 tons of air. Was that 84,000 tons of air? Once this in Japan, we'll be happy. We just obviously need to keep it up. We did have a disruption there to our uh, convoy system. So moving around the coast, cool. Okay. I'm using these assets over here now. These guys are quite useful. We could do lots of little things with these guys. So I quite like them. But I thought, well, what we can do then, because I wanted them to head out towards... Um, so they're going to be quite useful for like landings against like Port Moresby, for example. I think these can carry troops. Yeah, they can carry. They can carry about 125. I look at these guys as like very well larger landing barges, essentially. Well, much larger landing barges. They carry 125 troops. They carry a decent amount of cargo. They're pretty good for unloading on um, opposed landings because well, if you lose one of them, you don't lose a huge amount really. So I thought, well, we might as well have it carry some fuel out to Saipan. So I don't have any fuel at Saipan, so it'd be useful to have such at Saipan. Comes in handy. Still see subs around here. Okay. Yeah, we're not far from the end. These guys are loading up and be moved down shortly, so we can go and take those bases then. This is being built up over here. Alright, let's head him back. We do have supply moving out. That's fuel moving out there to Copang, which is useful. Excuse me. Okay. Alright, we're we'll just continuing to repair, build up. Where was that then? Canberra. 148.83. So that was here then. Okay. I had a small minefield laid at Rangoon just to protect against submarines, really, but I decided to get a little bit too brave. So it's running reconnaissance over Imperial Guard Division there, it seems. Does it make much of a difference, really? Ah, Wu Chang expands airfield to size 4. Well, that's handy there. That's very nice for him to do then, though. Oh, very nice. Vegeta is reported to escape capture. No Edward check again. Right. So, seven killed in action today. Okay. Still uh, Ueda. No, Fujita. Possibly. Very nice. So 70 days away from the Yamato. Well, Yamato. Yonyo. Not far away. Or well, Yonyo. Not far away. I'm looking forward to when the uh, Yamato is done because that means we're going to have additional naval uh, shipyard available then. Spread it out a little bit more. Okay. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and call it about there. So thank you very much for watching there, ladies and gentlemen. I'd love to go on longer, but I do not have that much to talk about. It's more or less just a case of getting it done. And I do have my Japanese work to do. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again in the future. I do hope you're all maintaining your health and doing well. And thank you all for showing. Obviously, always appreciate the opinions 
A diverse conversation is always a good conversation. It's a healthy conversation. But I'm not paying any of you. <laughs> See you later, guys. Have a good one. It's been great having you. Adios. Sayonara. Are you gone yet? <laughs>